is News 12 Brooklyn. 18 teachers spent the day playing with robots at New York University's Polytechnic Institute in Fort Greene. They teach in economically disadvantaged schools in central Brooklyn. This week, thanks to programs at NYU Poly, they're developing hands-on science lessons using technology many students in those areas have never seen. We can use robotics as a hook uh, and then uh, expose them to... Uh, some of the uh, modern science. We're creating a lesson for fourth grade. Um, part of their curriculum is, wa is the study of water. These teachers are making a motorized water wheel. Others programmed an iPod to operate a remote controlled car. The goal is to engage students so they'll stay excited about science and math and excel at it. Teachers say it's working. In a survey last spring, teachers reported that out of 810 students, 80% saw a full or a half point jump in their math and science grades. That's not all. Students who are exposed to mechatronics are more likely to pursue college degrees in engineering. Teachers say they also enroll in more challenging classes. A lot of our children have opted to take AP classes, AP physics, AP um, mathematics, calculus. The program's in its fourth year and funded by a grant from the National Science Foundation. Organizers hope to eventually include 36 schools. So this is the iPhone controlled RC truck. It utilizes a main controller with the Linksys router, which it uses to communicate wirelessly with the iPhone. Uh, using the iPhone, we're able to control the direction of the truck, left or right, and we're also able to control the speed of the truck. We'll go forward, or we can go backwards. So using them both together, you can drive the truck around the room. This is a, a smart house, and uh, all the different features are controlled through your own personal iPhone. Uh, so one of the main features is the alarm system, and the way the security system works is it has two lines of defense. One is a laser, which uh, traverses the entire perimeter of the front yard. Uh, so using these two mirrors, it bounces off uh, each of the mirrors, and it's received here. So when you break the laser's line of sight, it sets off the alarm. Uh, you manage to get past that when you open the front door. That also sets off the alarm. Uh, so some of the other features also, you could open up the garage door from using the iPhone. You could also control the window blinds using the iPhone. Here we have a, a, a pulley setup where it's hooked up to two motors and fishing line that's attached to a platform. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to lift up these objects um, with the, the motors and the pulley system using a remote control. But when we try to lift up these objects by pressing the up button, you can hear that the motors lock up, meaning that they're not powerful enough to lift up the weight of this, these objects. So what we're going to do now is we're going to observe how we can enable these motors to lift up these objects by way of mechanical advantage of pulleys. So here you can see that the motors are actually able to lift up these objects which they would otherwise be, un be unable to lift up without the use of pulleys. So, what we have here is a LEGO image scanner that works like a scanner, you know, as you have at home. And what they do is they simply load the image into the machine. And the machine uses a light sensor to detect the higher low value of the light. So, line up the light and let the program run. Now as it's running, it's transversing its own grid and it's recording the reflected light dust. So now that it's done, it's stored the data on the NXT rig. So we have to get the data off the NXO. You see the final image there, and the original image there. The idea of this um, science demo is to teach kids about stress and strain. And so what we want to teach them about is a material and how material deforms. So you would hook it up to an NXT and you can count how many rotations there are to deform the object. 
and then this is the material. So they count the uh, measure the length and the width of the material after they deform it. And then here's another one that's a little bit more simple for the kids to build. So she's What is insoluble? A lot of people think that it's pretty self-explanatory, the idea of solubility. So here I have two beakers, 300 milliliters in each. One has water, which is the one without the lid, and the other one has alcohol, ethanol. And I want to show everyone how good water is at breaking down particles. And mind you, the human body consists of approximately 60% water. So remember, this is the water, and this is the ethanol. I'm just gonna stir this around and give it a couple of whirls. Same with this, I'm gonna stir it around, give it a couple of I whirls. I think we can all see that from this, this, the one with the water, that the cracker is pretty much, no longer has the, the structure of a nice crispy cracker. Peter, it's just ethanol. Would you mind taking the cracker out, putting it up to the camera, and cracking it? Uh, what did we learn from that? We learned that water is actually a pretty amazing and powerful solvent. And that's part of the reason why we live on this planet Earth, and it's primarily water. For example, if you're a NASA engineer and you built and sent a robot to Mars, and you want to know the distances that it travels on Mars. But you cannot go to Mars and measure the distance with a ruler stick, right? So how, how, would you, how would you try to figure out how far the, this robot goes without, without actually measuring the distance? Um, you can put like a little something that measures the floor or something in the bottom of it, like a camera. Oh, you can, you, know, put a, you can put a ruler. So uh, uh, yeah, but you cannot <laughs> put a ruler because, like, like I said before, when you're on Mars, you cannot really, you know, measure the ruler. Maybe we can somehow relate the turning of the wheels to the distance that it travels. For example, oh, let, me, let me give you an example. Oh! So I'm going to mark the wheel where it started, and I'm going to turn it one complete revolution, and I'm going to mark the spot where it finished. Do you guys see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a yeah, great idea. Yeah. Now, how come revolutions turn revol? Happens. Say queer friends. Circumference. Circumference. Revolutions. Yeah. How do you equal distance? So this is one revolution. This is the distance. This is the two revolutions. This is the distance. Five. This is.